I'm Alan Dale's chief meteorologist, Ryan Martin, with a look at your midday weather update. Everybody is abuzz about all the rain that fell in the middle of the country over wheat areas, and there was a lot. There is more coming. Let's talk about that a little bit. We've got strong Canadian high pressure that's settling in over the country behind a very big cold front that's just now starting to work into the eastern third of the Corn Belt or so. As that high settles down, we'll watch for some wraparound, some backside moisture to start to funnel in off of the Gulf of Mexico. And it's going to materialize over West Texas and eastern parts of New Mexico, likely as we go toward midnight tonight. That moisture is going to flow northward into eastern parts of Colorado, western Kansas. Could produce some good thunderstorms there. And then we expect better thunderstorm development probably as we go through the day tomorrow and into tomorrow night over parts of Kansas. So the hard red winter wheat belt looking at picking up more rain. I think the western parts of the wheat belt might do better in terms of rain than the east. I'm concerned about one to three inch rainfall totals from eastern Colorado through western Kansas. Then we're going to be seeing more hit and miss half to two inch totals that are very thunderstorm based over the central and eastern parts of the hard red winter wheat belt. The reason why we use the word concerned when we say one to three inch rainfall totals in the west we're still dealing with some flooding issues up in portions of northeast Colorado, the South Platte Valley, for example. So more rain, especially if it's anywhere near that three-inch line, probably not the most beneficial. However, with regard to the plains, with regard to wheat, and you know what? I'd say grains in general. I think more so than the rain, maybe the bigger close-in story is temperatures. I'm looking at a low tonight, 26 degrees, Grand Forks, North Dakota. Mid to upper 20s are going to be found over most of North Dakota, northern Minnesota. Uh, mid 20s to low 30s, potentially all the way down into central Wisconsin, central Minnesota, northern parts of South Dakota. So here's the big question. Spring wheat planting has been so far ahead to this point. What's emergence like? And if we do have a good emergence of this spring wheat, you know, spring wheat is hardier, but at the same time, What's a 26-degree temperature do? By no means does it probably kill things, but it could definitely whack the crop just a little bit, kind of stunt us back so that, you know, we lose some of the increased or, or speedier seeding that we've seen. Temperatures look big to me, especially when you look at the fact that, you know, spring wheat seeding was way ahead of pace. But how much of general spring row crops were planted up there? How much corn's in the ground? I do have it on authority that some folks are telling me that their corn's not up yet, even though it's been in the ground a while. But still, cold temperatures over the northern part of the U.S., not something to trifle with right now. It might be more shock value than anything else, but it'll be real interesting to see where the 20-degree temperatures, where the twos are at as we take a look at the numbers from 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. We will see this cool air push down across the rest of the Corn Belt. Of course, it'll modify. We're not talking about mid-20s anywhere in the Corn Belt, but... Northern parts of Indiana, southern lower Michigan, northwestern Ohio, upper 30s, not out of the question. We're looking at 40s across a good chunk of the rest of the Corn Belt. So cool air is here. As we go on forward then, as the cool air starts to wane, we are seeing more moisture come back into the Corn Belt. Looks like that action that moves through the plains as we go from tonight through tomorrow and into early Wednesday moves across the western Corn Belt Wednesday, and then Wednesday night, Thursday, probably pushes into the eastern Corn Belt. That'll be enough to maybe delay the field work a little bit that needs to be done yet in spots, delay it just a bit longer. We'll put some dry days together from Friday through Saturday, and then we have our big Memorial Day system that we've been talking about, it seems like, forever coming through the precipitation as we go through the middle part of this week western corn belt looks to be a little bit heavier i'd say half to maybe one one and a half inches of rain over the western corn belt but once you get across the mississippi river valley anything that happens as we go through late wednesday and into early thursday that looks to be much more minor a few tenths maximum maybe just a few hundreds and coverage the farther east you go i think falls off a bit i'm looking at 80 percent coverage south of i-80 in the western corn belt in the east here at midweek uh, maybe 60 percent is a better figure the weekend system we've been talking about it a while i'm actually bumping the upper end of the range a little bit we did this this morning in our online write-up no reason to change it based on the latest model information i've seen half to two inches of rain easily i think we could do two and a half in spots if thunderstorms come together right still looking at the main timetable for the corn belt being sunday now through i'm going to extend it into tuesday some of this will really start to get going over the western corn belt though maybe later saturday saturday late afternoon saturday evening so we'll just have to see how it comes in but good rains coming here another system showing up as we look at our long-term forecast around the 29th 30th that one probably an inch or less but it's got good organization right now 
and we'll then try and dry things down a bit for the turn of the month. However, starting to see some thunderstorm clusters, these mesoscale clusters coming together maybe in parts of the western Corn Belt around the first into the second. Anytime you see those, they're very localized, very hit and miss, but they also bear mentioning. That's what we've got in your midday forecast. If you've got any questions on the weather, give us a call at Allendale. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin.